Eden Utilities can help your organization to convert the energy it uses every day into a more sustainable source of supply. We are a professional, totally independent, but friendly utility consultancy that can offer any organization a way of converting its own waste into energy. This provides a number of beneficial rewards. So, if you already recycle items like plastics and paper, you could now use the rest of the waste your business creates to generate power for use back into your organization. If you don't do any recycling yet, you could start now, without the need for any additional effort or large investment in time or cash to accommodate the initiative. Our Eden Infinity product provides your business with a way of not only helping the planet, but also saving you money. Your business creates waste. That waste is collected, and then we work with your energy supplier to ensure that the power generated from your waste is used to supply electricity back to you. In doing something like this, along with doing your bit to help save the planet and meeting your business's green targets, it provides great PR for your organization, sending a very positive message to your suppliers, clients, and stakeholders. It's something to be very proud of. At Eden Utilities, we pride ourselves on being unique with our continuous innovation, along with our ethos of providing a fully transparent pricing model to all our clients. Our personable approach means we always work with you to find the best for you. We regard ourselves as an extension of your business, a partner. Eden Utilities, your sustainability partner. Away here in Leighton Orient for those boys wearing red. Tier 3 and no crowd here, the stadium is dead. A star in Max Waters and a hero in Glen. We hope the three points come home with the red men. So sit back and watch us, you great fans of Crawley Town. It's episode 20 of Talk of the Town.
Yes, hello. Welcome to the Brea Group Stadium, or should I say the underground of the Brea Group Stadium, currently standing next to the two disabled toilets. So make of that experience that we're having so far what you will. We're going to have probably a limited show for you today because unfortunately we can't get some guests down from the director's box, which is way up above. But we do have the highlights. We've got a Mr. and Mrs. to bring you. We've got a Charlie Palethorpe special about fans returning. Obviously a few ads, and I'm delighted to say I'll be joined by Tom Cameron, one of the few guests that we can get down here today because, well, there's been some quite strict restrictions so far. But first up, we're going to take a look at how the Reds got on against Bradford City on Tuesday. <coughs> Saturday's loss to Oldham made it six defeats in a row for Bradford and the end of Stuart McCall's third spell at the Bantams. Academy coaches Mark Truman and Connor Sellers take charge tonight against a Crawley side themselves with just one win in seven. That coming here against Barrow on Saturday. Crawley make two changes, Archie Davis and Nick Trasilla come in. Bradford make three. 18-year-old Finn cousin Dawson makes his third start. Good to see fans back in at the People's Pension Stadium. Had fans in against Barrow at the weekend. There's us double that number tonight, over a thousand in tonight, which is good to see. Socially distance, of course. It's gone all the way through to Glenn Morris in the Crawley goal. Because Crawley has signed a famous face this week, Mark Wright from TV show Towie has signed on 13 years after he was last here. It's not Involved tonight though, here comes Chasula, good ball across and an important interception because Max Waters was waiting to get a touch on that. Truman across, good defending. Stuart McCall won just five of his 20 league games in his third spell in charge at Bradford. Club legend of course, it's a tussle in the box and appeals for a penalty. The referee Sam Perkis has waved that away. Austin Samuels, the man that went over. Nothing given, though. Here's Samuels, appeals for offside. Again, the flag stays down this time. Samuels gets to the byline, pushed out by the keeper, who spills it! And Lee Novak puts Bradford in front. Well, just minutes after they were denied what they thought was a penalty, Bradford, they've taken the lead, but Glenn Morris will be disappointed. He's pushed that straight to Lee Novak. And he gets his fourth goal of the season, first in six games. No win in eight for Bradford. Six defeats in a row. But they've got themselves in front here. Little tug of the shirt on Tom Dallison. Gives Crawley a free kick. Maybe Sam Matthews to swing this one over. Oh, it's taken a deflection and gone in. And that could well be an own goal. Brilliantly whipped in by Sam Matthews. And it's Harry Pritchard that's got the final touch to nut it past his own keeper, Richard O'Donnell. Dallison with the throw. And by Jack Powell. Too long, but again, Dallison will try and keep this alive for Crawley. Off by Novak. Novak gets it back again from Callum Cook. The touch is taken. He wide, driven across, and cleared away from danger. And Novak just pulling a little bit wide, couldn't hit the target. Sides met here back in January. Crawley won that one by two goals to one. Bradford have a greater need of points at the moment. They'd started tonight's game in 22nd place in the table. This is Novak. He's got to put them ahead in the first half. Callum Cook back to Novak. What? Connor Wood. Patient this from Bradford. Chipped over the top, nodded away by Jordan Tunnicliffe, out as far as Novak. This is Samuels. 
Well, he's looked lively tonight, Austin Samuels, on loan from Wolves. He's got inside a corner there. Bradford looking to try and get themselves back in front here. What a great corner, didn't miss out the first man. Plenty of red shirts back behind the ball here. Good save by Morris, just pushed that one away. Pritchard, he was denied. Looking to make up for that own goal he scored in the first half, it was a good shot save. Powell, to weave his way through midfield, Levi Sutton puts a foot in, now Samuels once again will set off on one of those mazy runs. Novak waiting in the middle, challenged by Jake Hessenthaler. It was aimed in towards the path of Connor Wood, it wasn't a great ball though, and now Crawley might try and capitalise here. Infield by Pritchard. Cook laid forward again. Good save by the goalkeeper who's been kept busy, Glenn Morris. That's Novak again. Down the line for Hessenthaler. Hooked across. And it took a flick off Max Waters. Tom Nichols tried the acrobatic but was well off target. It's almost surreal to hear real cheers in the stadium. Hopefully the shape of things to come with more fans getting back into great into stadiums. That's Shot from Ferguson goes wide. Found a little bit of space there on the edge of the area. Couldn't hit the target though. It's a complete miss kick by Hessenthaler. Connor Wood. A little flick on the edge of the area. Lee Novak didn't come off for him. Crawley looking to try and break. Good solid challenge from Elliot Watt, and Novak once again, playing with a bit of confidence now, Lee Novak, and just fires too high. Well, he scored the opening goal, he's had three or four half chances. Lee Novak didn't have to make Glenn Morris make a save there. Well, you've got a big game coming up in January, they take on the Premier League side leads in the third round of the FA Cup. Two. Take good form into that. Away to Orient, home to Newport, and away to Forest Green to come for them in their next three matches. Comes out to Jack Powell. Bradford just throwing bodies in front of the ball. I think it was Anthony O'Connor there that was the last man, just literally diving in front to try and prevent the shot. Just sense a little bit of frustration among the Crawley supporters at the moment. This is Nathan Ferguson, chip forward again, and the shot back across goal from Waters goes just wide again. And it's just been that sort of night for John Yem's side. No one attacked it, no one able to try and stab it in. Agonizingly close. He's still pressing. There's Ashford. Forced that wide once again. That's a good challenge on the edge of the area because the red shirts were, were mounting in the middle. And again, there's no foul. We will try and capitalise Cirilla. He goes down, and Bradford, you can see, furious. They felt they should have had a free kick just a moment or so ago the other way. It's a similar position to where Crawley's goal came from in the first half. Goes all the way to the back post this time. 
and Tony Craig heads onto the roof of the net. Good defender getting up highest, but couldn't get any downward force on the ball. Well, there goes the full-time whistle. Clayton Donaldson gathers the ball. Crawley's fans haven't seen a win back in the stadium. They did at the weekend, but they couldn't repeat it tonight. It's a vital point, really, for Bradford under their caretaker managers since the departure of Stuart McCall. A point not really what's needed, though, when you're down in 22nd place in the table. They battled hard. Lee Novak was one of the standout performers. Plenty of chances for him. But in the end, both sides have to settle for a point. It's finished here. Crawley Town won. Bradford City won. Yes, hello. Welcome back to the Brea Group Stadium, or should I say the underground of the Brea Group Stadium. Hello to everybody watching in Reds Bar. I hope you're taking advantage of the delicious deals we have on offer for you today. Just to inquire with Rona at the bar and I'm sure she'll be happy to tell you all about it. And hello to everyone watching at home. Remember, you can comment down below, send in your score predictions, send in your questions. We'll try and answer them throughout the duration of the show if we have time. And if you are watching at home, you can follow all the action for £10 on iFollow. In your heart, in spirit, in soul, you make every tackle, score every goal. You're part of it, wherever you are in the world. From the first minute until the last kick. Victories, heartbreaks, you're part of the fabric, the passion, devotion, supercharging emotion. For you, there is only one. Abiding loyalty, togetherness that is second to none. Follow every kick, every tackle, every goal. With access to live stream games and match day commentary. With coverage spanning the globe. Behind the scene content, newsletters and match highlights. There's no better way for you to get closer to your club. And with I follow sales supporting them, there's no better way to show your love. And you can't be there, be there with I follow. I was hoping to bring you some team news at this current stage, but my friend Tom Cameron is still in the toilet. Tom? Tom? Oh, there he is. You're right. Sorry, yeah, I just got distracted by some of the amazing commodities we're surrounded <laughs> by. Really, really impressive. Uh, it's absolutely lovely here, I have to say. I believe you've got some team news for us. I do. So today it looks like a 4-4-2 for the Reds. Uh, Glenn Morris in goal. Tom Dallison at left back, we think. Uh, a partnership of Tony Craig and Jordan Tunnicliffe at the back. Uh, Archie Davies at right back. Two wingers are Taryn Alarakia and Sam Matthews. Uh, in centre midfield, it's Jake Hessen Tyler and Jack Powell. And up top, it's Tom Nichols and that man, Max Waters. Very, very nice. So, return to the side of Taryn Alarakia. What do you think that is? I'm not actually entirely sure. Um, I can't give too much of a reason. He's been out the side and out the squad actually in a, f in a few weeks prior to this game. But I'm quite happy for him to get his chance again. You know, I feel like T eventually it, it will really blow up and he will kick on. He just needs that one game maybe to score a goal and, and to really have you know, a 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10 game. Yeah, and Tom Dallison keeps his place at left back. He's been really impressive since coming back in. Yeah, Tom just gives us, I think, a bit more, a bit more height from set pieces. I know set pieces is, is a part of our game maybe we, where we can see too many. Uh, Tom gives us a bit of height. He's not too bad going forward. He's quite good on the ball. And, you know, he's a good player to have at left back. And obviously Max and Tom keep their places up front. No real surprise there. Max has been on form, obviously. There's been plenty of speculation about him getting a move in January. What... What would you say is a fair price tag for, for Max? Listen, I, I don't want to come out with, with huge figures, but obviously I've seen comments online and you'd, you'd want maybe seven figures for Max. Yeah. Um, I think it, he's worthy of it. He's 21 years old, he's English, he fits the mould of, of a player that many sides will want. Um, so I think seven figures. Yet yeah, in the current climate, COVID, we all know it. It might be difficult to get a, to hi a higher sum for Max and we'll just have to see what happens really. Yeah, well, obviously we're in tier three now, so we should probably have our masks on, but because we're broadcasting, we're, we're exempt from that rule. But no fans here today. Do you think that's going to be a positive for us? No, no home fans? Yes and no. Um, I think even going to a, a, an empty stadium away from home is difficult. It's not your home surroundings. You know, the lads are upstairs about five floors up getting changed. 
you know, looking out onto the pitch. So it's different circumstances, but no, I think I think we'll be good. I, I can I can see us getting a result today. Yeah. So you speak about us getting a result. Could we grab a score prediction from you? Early score doors, prediction. Um, last year I came here. What a game that was. Three two. I'm going to say 3-2 again yeah. because there's a, there's a theme between the two sides. I think there's been four 3-2s in the last nine meetings. Plenty of goals. I'm, I'm, I'm up for it. 3-2, what do you think? Uh, I, I think we're going to win today. I think, like you say, we've got a good record here. I think the lads, uh, the, the away form has really improved recently when you consider it. Going away to Colchester and Mansfield, picking up points there. Two unbelievable points. And I think I was speaking to Lee, obviously, this week and it's just about turning them into three and I think yeah, today exactly. could be the day. But obviously... Our home form hasn't, certainly hasn't been bad. I think we were probably a little bit unlucky not to grab three points against Bradford. Yeah, especially first half. I think second half we kind of dropped off a little bit. But first half, you know, we dominated the possession. The only stat that let us down was we didn't have a shot on target. Yeah. So we weren't turning that possession and, and, and those fantastic intricate bits of play into goal-scoring opportunities. And Glenn made a, a few good saves. So looking back at it, you could say our draw maybe and yeah. was a fair result. But then again, away at, um, at Colchester and Mansfield, Trying to be biased, we should have won both of those <laughs> yeah. games. Oh no, absolutely! And you say obviously we had no shots on target. I think one person that disagrees with that is Sam Matthews. I know he's <laughs> he's furious that his free kick has gone down as an own goal. He reckons it was on target. So I think he wants us to appeal that one actually. But I don't know how you saw that one. Listen, I think the shot was going on target, but the defender got so much contact on it that I don't think it will be overturned. Sorry, but Sam. you know, Sam. Get on the score sheet today, mate. I know he's desperate to get his first goal for the Reds. He thought, I mean, it's my fault on the PA to, <laughs> for, for saying it was his goal. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I'm confident Sam will get it soon and, and he'll really kick on because he's, he's a great player. Yeah, no, he's a great guy. He's a great player. And I think, like you say, as soon as he gets that first goal, I think it's just a case of how many more he can get and he'll really kick on. A little bit like Taron, I think. I think that's probably the same situation for both of them and hopefully they can have a really good game today. But obviously, it has been fantastic to welcome the home fans back in the last two games against Barron and Bradford. Obviously, 600 against Barron, 1,300 against Bradford. Yeah, unbelievable. I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to Boxing Day. I love a Boxing Day game and I'm so happy this year we're at home again. Uh, last year, obviously, we remember the Northampton game, 4-0. Yeah, amazing. Unbelievable. The fans were up, unbelievable too. Everyone was in the Christmas spirit and I hope it's the same this year. You know, 30, I think it'll be 1,300 again. But honestly, the, the atmosphere the lads created last, last time was, was unbelievable. So I'm really excited for that. Yeah, and obviously it was an incredible occasion to welcome the fans back. And Charlie Palethorpe captured an incredible video as we welcome the fans back to the People's Pension Stadium.
just at a perfect moment because that man, Max Potter, is in front of the fans with the first real chance that Crawley have had for the afternoon. Nichols, right footed, looking for goal number eight of the season. In the bottom corner, absolutely no problem for Tom Nichols. And Crawley have come from behind. And as we enter the final 10 minutes of the game, they lead by three goals to two. Clifford touches it forward. Nichols gets it under control. Madison was in his own half. Couldn't be offside. He's got what to square. Can he play it in? What a for the hat-trick! Waters gets a hat-trick in stoppage time and Crawley wrap up the points against Barrow and they come from behind and they now lead for four goals to two and Waters has a hat-trick and it's mighty Max, Mad Max doing it for Crawley this afternoon it is 4-2 Waters has a hat-trick Nichols has the other one and Crawley have won by four goals to two now, surely, Tony. Yes, another fantastic video from Charlie Palethorpe, our videographer. Really doesn't get enough credit. He is amazing. And obviously, what else was amazing was welcoming the fans back. In that video, there was only 600 of you, but the atmosphere was incredible. We can't wait to have you all back as we get back to full capacity, hopefully in the very near future. You join us again from the Bray Group Stadium, home of Leighton Orient. Tom, I believe you've been doing your research. <laughs> what can we expect from our opponents today? Yeah, no, Leighton Orient are a good side. I think they're 10th from the table. Um, we've got Max Waters and we know what he's capable of, 12 goals in the league, but they, they've got Danny Johnson, also 12 goals, mm. so we'll have to keep a, an eye out for him, you know, he looks like a real good player, played a bit of football up in Scotland before he came here, um, and he looks, he looks good, they've got Joby McEnough, 39 years old, yeah. I remember him running about for Reading in the Premier League <laughs> yeah. about 15 years oh, ago, yeah. so um, say that was about four, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I remember him, um, and yeah, they've got some really, really good players, and it will be a tough game, I do expect both teams to score, yep. One for the betters. <laughs> Get on the both teams to score. Well, <laughs> not that we're encouraging that. No, no, but of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. I think, of course. Um, yeah. I think they've got some good players and it'll be a really, really entertaining game. Yeah, and obviously they've been on a really good run of form recently, but I don't think, I think people think they've gone way at the table, but they are only two points ahead of us. A win would put us above Leighton Orient today, I think. Yeah, obviously they, they went up to Morecambe in the last game and they lost out 2 1. They went one up and um, Morecambe turned them over. Obviously we beat Morecambe 4 0, but that's League Two. Just teams beat teams and it, you can't predict anything really in this league. And 
Listen, Leighton Orient beat Newport, who were top of the table at home as well. So it's really up and down. I think this league, I know it's going to sound stupid, and it's like that Michael Owen cliche, but it is literally just... If you can score more than one goal, you've probably got quite a good chance of winning the game. Yeah. You've just got to really hold out once you go one the up. I mean, Bradford is an example. Luckily, we broke them down with that Sam Matthews free kick. But they went one the up, and I've never seen a team sit so deep after that. They looked really content with that, that one they'll lead. Yeah, they did. I think, obviously, they, they lost their manager, and it was a new kind of system for them. And I think they did perhaps play a bit for the point mm. um, they sat back quite deep and obviously I think Max Waters thrives off of having a bit of space in behind and he wasn't quite finding that space and obviously he didn't score for the first time in a, in a few games so yeah hopefully uh, Leighton Orient I think they're a side that will go for it they'll play with a higher line and I think Max will find that space in behind where Tom and Sam can, can find him pick him out and he can go one on one it is actually incredible when you think about it it's almost like the more confident the opposition is the more confident Max probably is because he knows that they're going to push up higher up the pitch and then he can get that space in behind. And I don't think you'd probably fancy anyone else in this league through and goal one on one than him. I don't think he's missed a one on one yet. He's been absolutely incredible so far. Yeah, from what we've seen, Max is. We, we talk about him every week, and we just <laughs> it, it's getting a bit ridiculous. And he might slow down. He might not. We don't know. But he's been fantastic, and he's probably be, probably been for me the best striker I've seen here for te for ten yeah. years. So, well, since since Matt Matt, Matt Tubbs. Tubbs, yeah. Um, so you know, I'd love for us to keep hold of him. I don't know if we will. I don't know the ins and outs. If we get a good sum of money, it might might be worth selling him on. But I really, really want him to stay. Yeah, and as we've previously mentioned, some of you are watching in Red's Bar today and you can get some delicious treats from Ballers. Let's check out an advert from them. Yep, we're back again. Before we head into Mr. and Mr., we just want to say we want to hear from you. If you're bored of Mr. and Mrs., if you're bored of Mastermind, we need to hear your ideas. We're always up for ideas. We want to film some new content with the lads. Obviously, we are a little bit restricted of what we can film due to the coronavirus restrictions, but we do want to hear from you. We want some great ideas from you, and we will get recording them. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we've sat in the office and come up with a few ideas that would be great. Uh, I think we teased Ken dine with me, you know, Ooh. Kiosk Ken, Ooh. real fan favourite, get round Ken's with his wife and... She and does cook. make a mean cake, Carol. Exactly, say, so, so we could judge her cake, I think we get Joe round, we get Tom round, yeah, Ben would come round. Yeah, round, get a few of the lads round, a few of the lads live across from Ken, so... Exactly, I think it'll be, when it's Covid compliant and um, this all ends, Ken dine with me is top of the list. But yeah, send in your ideas guys, um, anything you can come up with that you'd like to see us give a go. Whether we had, we had Weakest Link was another idea. Um, yeah, that'd be good. Just the classic game shows. Send us in a comment and we'll read all of them. We really will. Yeah. For now, we are going to head to Mr. and Mrs. This week, we spoke to Jack Powell and Jake Hessenthaler. Mr. and Mrs. Uh, sorry, what? Mr. and Mr. The Crawley Town Football. Uh, who comes up with this stuff? Hi Reds fans, welcome back to another episode of Mr and Mr. Today I'm joined by Jake Hessenthaler and Jack Powell. Lads, you ready for this one? Ready, yeah, Confident? of course. Confident? Yes. I think it was Gonna smash Madison it. and Tanaki have got a very good score, but... Mm. I think they cheated, didn't they? Uh, I watched that, probably. I cheated there. Yeah. Strangely close, though, <laughs> yeah, so... Right, first question. Who takes more pride in their looks? Sorry, this, uh, this is out of you two at the moment. This oh, is okay. not the whole team, this is just between you two. <laughs> Jeez. Mm. You see my cover. So, so you're trying to match. Show your answers to the camera. That is a match. That's one point. Yeah, Jack? Pally. That's it. 
Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, uh, he's always, like, he's always, Hess, like, he's always Hess like, cares about his hair. No, he's late to train, you know. Have you seen his kind of, oh, mate, honestly, way gay, he's always combing his beard and that. <laughs> oh, I don't see anything like it. Alright. Now, out of the two of you, who's quicker? That's a fucking no brainer. That's a no brainer, yeah. It's easy. So, yes, yeah, another point. Oh, Jack, you don't back yourself on that one. Um, no. <laughs> if she was asking who's quicker out of me and the gaffer, then it would be me. Other yeah. than that, then... No, yeah. The gaffer probably yeah. fancy himself as well. <laughs> Who is more likely to be late to training? I feel like you've just answered this, to be fair. This is not really true. I don't think <laughs> neither of us would ever be late. You can ask his car school. Show your answers. It's another point, you're free. Yeah, you yeah really but the course. thing is, I'll actually, I'm never late for training. It's just the meet time with the car. But we just leave ourselves so much time, we, would, we wouldn't be late. So If you're talking about actually on the training ground, though. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 I, I have to see the physio and stuff, yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Who is more likely to get sent off during a game? Tricky one, actually. It's easy. Oh, I don't know. But, yeah. Show your answers. <laughs> really? Oh, no, it's not <laughs> really? I don't know. Come on, explain, explain uh, the reasoning behind that. Jake. I don't know. I've picked up a few yellows lately. Then he picked up. Well, I've not got, got a yellow yet. There's no doubt that it'll probably be two yellows. Yeah, yeah. I've not got a yellow. But it's yeah, unlikely no, to no get straight red. Yeah, I've not. I was got... just thinking that. Uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't got a yellow yet. You That's just, why I went off. I went off these yellows. You do slide in more than me though. Yeah, true. Do you know what I mean? So you never know. You can just miss time. Yeah, just just timing, aren't it? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I've, I've picked a couple of yellows lately. That's, yeah. that's a tough one, that. Mm. Fair enough. Right, this is the last one of this round. Who dresses the best out of you two? We've got... <laughs> who takes more pride, but who dresses better? All right. Jack was very quick. It's very... Uh, he's gone very quick, but I'm going to go because I'm just going to try and match. But I don't agree. All right, go. I don't agree, right, but yeah, it's another match. Don't you agree. Don't agree. To be honest, you no. don't bring your best gear out. Don't bring your best gear no, until we have, so until we you have a night out or yeah. a, like, a, yeah. like, a, like a bonding night. Like, Do you know out. the only thing is, like, we both are usually just slack like, tracks with us, and yeah. But I've Fair probably enough. wore jeans a couple more times, yeah. yeah. So that's probably why. Fair enough. But I do right. Good jeans as well, not just jeans, like good jeans. Debatable. They're good jeans. Right, we start the second round out. This is about your teammates. So you've got a whole squad to pick from. Mm-hmm. Who would make the worst carpool member? So who would you least like to share a car with on the way to training or a game? Uh, <laughs> I've seen Jack's answer and a few people, oh no, I'll show you answers. Oh no. I hope you don't get upset about yeah, this. Yeah. He's been picked a few times. Oh, yeah, but I'll try and tell him, you know, yeah. his character building. Is this building. for the same reason? His, his character building. What, he what was the other reason? He always um, does and he gets upset about things. Yeah. Um, his character it's, building football, yeah. isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, like, yeah. like, now, like, he might get upset about the fact that we've said him. I, like, <laughs> if people take offence to things, mm. that's not really right, my cup of tea. It'd be alright. I like right. him, though. Yeah. He's alright. Character building, as he says. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the quickest member of the squad? <sighs> Debatable. You've only got one. Well, there's two. Wrong so far. There's two, and <laughs> you just uh, there's three actually. If you really think about it, you're five but no one really like. Yeah, but if you really think about it, you're only going to really know it. I'm basing mine on stats. Stats. Yeah. Fair play. I'm basing mine off. Pure pace. Pure, I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm going for oh, yeah. Ladders, yeah. No, it was it's hard because it was like, between him and Max, really. and Max Waters, and actually Cissé, I think in a race yeah. would be up there. Fair enough. Yeah. But yeah. on our GPS Cissé. things, yeah. Yeah. it tells you how, yeah. how, how much you cover per, like what is it, uh, per second? Yeah. Yeah, Ladders yeah. is always the highest. Yeah. So. Fair play to Ladders. Right. Well, as you said, you don't bring your best gear to football, but out of the people who wear the gear here, who is the worst dressed? There the worst. Me. Yeah. There is, there has been a oh, common answer hey, to this one. You've got a, just because of yesterday. Oh, no, just, he just gave me the answer. There. Is that loud? Yeah, no, yeah. I didn't actually yesterday. give the answer. Oh, I think just because of yesterday. Tom Nichols' story. So. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Right. Show your answers. Well, yeah. I'll put sausage. Sausage. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
But when you're away and stuff like that, no, it's pretty. It's can't, a no-brainer. Can't me, can't it's no brainer. Who is the worst behaved member of the squad, or who picks up the most fines? So obviously we know there's Ooh, a picks up the most fines. Few I've seen. You leave your bottle on the pitch. Leave your jump on the pitch. That's fine. Who's? Oh, who reckon's top of the list? Who's, who's putting the most money in the kitty for the Christmas party? It's got to be the boys who got them the other day. One of those. Yeah. I don't know, I don't think we're gonna get this. struggled so far. Don't think we're gonna get this one. There's quite a few, there's a group. Mm, I'm gonna go with this one instead, actually. You've still only got one wrong, Carol. I don't oh, think he's gonna go for this one, but I'm just going for it. So your answers. Yeah, you've got to see so good for the day. Yeah, like they're part of the they're same castle. They're part castle. of the same castle, so, so they've had a few late. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it was one of them, really, and I just punted for yeah, CC. Yeah, one of those castles. Uh, yeah. Right. yeah. Final question. Out of the entire squad, who's the most vain? So who really cares? Who won't come on the camera without doing their hair? Vain. Who really takes pride, even for training? There's a few boys that take pride, but... I suppose taking pride is a little bit different to being... Vain. Like having yourself. Yeah, yeah, having yourself. There's a difference. Yeah. So there's quite a few that take a bit of pride, but no one like, that really sticks out. If you out. go for like, the best dress... If you're talking about best dress, I know who, who, who I'll pick. Oh, then actually. Then you talk about vain. Yeah. Mm. For, yeah, I might be giving him a clear, but a person that has a right go <laughs> well, on a daily basis. Yeah, but if you're going to go off that, he has a right go, but I'm not sure. I know he's, he's going to be the same yeah. as me now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. fair enough. But I'm, not sure, he's exactly. like I'm not sure Bully's vain, though. He's, he just he's has the right. Vain, he, is, he just has a very, go. If you're going to talk about best dress, he's the best dress. Vain, yeah. you could talk like, maybe like Nico and um, Nico. Sam Ashford. Ah, uh, okay. Sam, yeah. Because I think they. they I think for it's a touchy like, subject, I but I think, they, yeah, I think yeah. they use the sunbed. Oh, yeah. Wow. The sunbed. I think they do use the sunbed. <laughs> so you've only so got two wrong there, so very impressive score, but I think, I think you're either level with um, Madison and That was going to be tough or, to beat, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it was always going to be tough. You did well to be yeah, fair. Much better good. than Ashford and Nichols did a couple of weeks ago. That was, you know, they were pretty horrific, to be honest. Yeah, they had Ashford good to show, did they? Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. No worries. Back to myself in the studio. Mr. and Mrs. Uh, sorry, what? Mr. and Mr. The Crawley Town Football. Who comes yes, up? welcome back to the Bray Group Stadium. Just want to say a massive thank you to everyone that's commented and suggested ideas. We will get around to doing them as soon as possible. Behind the scenes content is definitely something that we're both interested in filming and obviously Nick from the filming company who has been a massive help and Morgan and Morgan, can't forget Morgan. They've both been a massive help and we can't wait to film some more content for you guys soon. The only comment that I can't do is turn myself into Joe Comper. No plastic surgeon in the world can do that. So you got with me the rest of the show so you're going to have to suck it up. But talking of behind the scenes, Tom, I believe you've got some funny behind the scenes stories from your trips to Leighton Orient. Yeah, Leighton Orient's always a funny one to visit. Um, the media guys here whenever I've come have been great, they're very helpful, um, always good guys, but we always seem to encounter some kind of difficulty. Mm. Um, today, we were... Oh, oh no, your mic's on mute. I'm back, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we keep rolling. Anyway, yeah. yeah, as we were saying, so funny stories from behind the scenes. Later so now on. you can actually hear what I'm saying, <laughs> if you want to. Um, yeah, we always kind of encounter some difficulties here. Mm. Uh, we were left out in the rain for a while earlier yep. just about dried up now uh, yeah. I was a drain I'm rat still soaked but, but yeah. <laughs> yeah and then last year obviously what a game that was and um, I was sitting next to Gary from the BBC uh, knocked all his equipment everywhere when Ollie Palmer <laughs> scored the winner so <laughs> that wasn't a great day but yeah I've been here as a fan and, and part of the team here and I really really do like coming here despite the, the strange difficulties that do kind of often come up yeah, no, it's a, it's a brilliant stadium to be fair. And last, uh, as you said last year, an amazing game, 3 2, sun was shining, the beers were flowing. If you have forgotten what happened last time, we're going to check out some highlights from last year. With Ling with the throw in on the right hand side, launched into the box. Target again was Angle, controlled here by Dennis. Demanding the ball on the right hand side is Ling, gets it. Delivery into the penalty area. Should be headed away by Crawley. Comes out here towards Josh Wright. Wants to shoot here. Does shoot and scores. Spectacular from Josh Wright. Scored on the opening day of the season. And he's at it again for Leighton Orient. Skids down towards the home support. 
Fantastic strike to break the deadlock here. Jinked in field, found the top corner. Orient lead 1-0. Delivered into the penalty area, but dealt with comfortably. Might still be alive here if uh, Doherty can get the ball into the area. Again, it's Grego Cox. Spins. Gets the cross away. And again, Orient don't really deal with the cross properly. Here is Bezlubala. Swing and a miss, but still going here, Bezlubala. And still. Fancies his chances here. Can he get this shot away? Does get the shot away. It's blocked. Comes out to Ferguson, who equalises. Orient had plenty of opportunity there to deal with the ball, to clear that one away. It's poor defending. And they've been punished. Ferguson dispatching beyond Brill. Crawley was saving the ends. Trying to thread it through. Unable to find the pass forwards. And now Crawley can bring the ball away. Again, it's Kamara seeing much more of the possession in the second period. Bezla Bala, always dangerous. Threads out towards the far side, but his pass is under hit. And it's Brophy who can bring away an over halfway for Leighton Orient. Can they turn defence into a decent attack here? Up towards the... Always busy Maguire Drew who goes down inside the penalty area and wins a penalty kick for Leighton Orient. It was a clumsy challenge inside the penalty area and the referee did not hesitate before brandishing the cards. And it's Lee Angle who dispatches the penalty to make it 2-1. Well, he hadn't scored for 11 months before the game in midweek. Now scored 2-2. Two and two. Right-hand side, Leighton Orient come forward and they are seeking a third here. Throw in taken quickly, trying to catch the Crawley defence on the hop. And goalkeeper Glenn Morris gets down to deny the goal from Dennis. Well, time and time again, he's uh, had a go this afternoon, Dennis. Really looked keen for it. Unable to beat Glenn Morris there. Long ball forward and a good spin on the right-hand side by Wilkinson. Wilkinson does brilliantly to step away from Doherty into the penalty area and all it needed was a touch inside the six-yard box. Excellent power and a driving run to Scoreline remains 2-1 to Orient. Corner kick for Crawley from the far side. Delivered right out towards the back of the box. Palmer, still Palmer. Oh, great goal. 2-2. Off of the bench and onto the score sheet for the former Orient man. Used his muscle to burst towards the left-hand side of the box. And after the strength came the finesse. Cute finish down towards the keeper's left. 2-2. Two -two. Kamara drops deep to pick up the ball. Rolling forwards. And now here is Bez Lubala. Sprays the pass out towards the right-hand side. Grego Cox to attack the fullback. Gets it towards the far post. And he's there with his second. A matter of minutes after he scored his first. He's grabbed his second goal of the game. Oli Palmer, last season's top scorer with a point to prove. And Crawley come from behind here and they lead 3-2. On a hat-trick. It's Palmer! Only just wide. Well, it looked like that one might just creep in. Fizzed through, just went wide.
Here come Leighton Orient. Driving run into the penalty area. Wants to go for it, does go for it. Top save, Glenn Morris down towards his left-hand side to deny Lee Angle. I apologise, it was uh, Dennis who showed quick feet and drew the save. Dennis winds up and it's touched over the top of the crossbar. Needed to be alert, Glenn Morris, to push that one away. Had two fine opportunities now to equalise. That would have been some goal. Can Crawley put this game to bed? Grego Cox, right-hand side, cuts back. Well, maybe showed too much of the ball to Brophy, the defender. And now he can bring away. And there goes the final whistle. Crawley have got this one over the line. They come back to win here and it finishes dramatically. Crawley three, Leighton Orient two. Yes, what a day that was. An incredible 3-2 victory here last year against Leighton Orient. Let's hope for some more of that today. To everyone that's watched, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed. I'm really sorry we couldn't bring you the normal show with our guests, but unfortunately due to restrictions, we weren't able to do that. But I'd like to say a big thanks to Tom for joining me. <laughs> thank you very much, yeah. Yeah, um, I think that's about all we've got time for. So there's only one thing left to do with the restrictions in place. Let's go and take our seats for the match. Tom, you got any bog row in there? What a show. If you enjoyed it as much as we did, you need to subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit that bell icon so you can be notified about when we are next live here from Talk of the Town. Make sure you don't ever miss an episode. Subscribe, hit the bell, and we will see you again very soon.